Hi guys, I'm Chris Kenner and here I am to answer some of your questions. We have printed a couple out and I am going to um, give it my best shot. So here we go. In the interest of time, I'm going to give some fairly brief uh, answers and some of the stuff I may go in depth a little later, but here we go. Okay, first question is from Illusion1. Um, it's a short question, but serious. And please be honest or PM me with your honest reply. Would you use any of Theory 11's tricks? And the second part of the question, do you buy make tricks anymore? Well, since I don't really understand what do you buy make tricks anymore means, we will answer the would you use any of Theory 11's tricks? Um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, I tend to not do that many things that are other people's. I try to do as much of my own stuff as I can. But if I was to pick one, um, I think Digital Dissolve is a great trick, but I probably wouldn't do it because I'm not a big gimmick, gimmick coin person. Um, to be honest, Panic would probably be the trick that I would, if I were to purchase one to do, probably be Panic. Uh, we do have something coming out that I think I actually will do because it's, it's, it's really great. It's called Profit. I'm not just trying to pitch it. It's just, it is really great. Um, it's by Tom Isaacson. It's called Profit. You're going to love it. And uh, we just shot it today. So it's, uh, I actually took the time and went, oh, would you teach me that? So it's pretty cool. Uh, that's the first one. Let's get to another one here. Um, Justin Clark. This is actually a great question. What made you decide to join the whole Theory 11 project? Why this, not some other popular uh, site out there? Um, well, joining another site would be kind of, they've already probably, they've already got a mission statement, any other site, or they've already got, they're already set in their ways. Uh, to be part of Theory 11, what interested me was it's new, it's fresh, we're starting from nothing, and uh, me personally, I love to help the youth of magic, and this is great because there's a lot of young people involved in this, a lot of young people involved in the, in the entire project, from the staff to the creators to the Jonathan Bain, the CEO, um, and you know everybody that's on the site. There's a lot of young people on the site. So if I have anything that I can offer or I can help or any sort of wisdom that I have from doing this for a long time, I'd love to give back to, uh, to the youth. So that's my answer to that one. All righty, uh, this one is from Longman or Longman. I just, you know, I had to answer a question from somebody named Longman. Anyone that named themselves Longman on the Magic site. Okay, how do you practice? How often? What do you do when you practice? Do you go through your routines, practice lights, patter? Uh, how often? For how long? Do you, do you practice casually? What does a professional do to practice? What is the process? Uh, well, for me, it's probably much different than someone that would be starting out in magic because I would have done it different when I was younger. Now I, I practice a lot. I mean, I actually have a deck of cards in my hand uh, four hours a day. I, I, mean, I kind of carry them around with me all the time. And I, I practice everything from, I try to, it's very difficult, but I really it, uh, uh, do try to keep up with all you young guys with all these flourishes. It's very difficult because there's some pretty damn talented people out there. Um, and I, I try to keep up as best I can. So. I practice a lot of, a lot of flourishes, um, at the same time, I do practice tons of technique. And for me, it's more about keeping my chops up, keeping my skill level up. So it's, it's more of a just practicing the basics and just practicing things that keep my hands in tune, keep myself going, going good, because my fingers and my chops are better than they've ever been. So um, I think that's kind of my secret to doing that. But I would never do a trick for the first time like when I worked at Illusions, I would never just learn a trick or come up, come up with an idea and just immediately go start doing it at tables. I would kind of play with it a little bit first and then work on it. I was kind of a perfectionist, so I would wait a little bit before I, I had it in. It's hard to practice your whole presentation for nobody because um, you're not getting any feedback back from the people. So it's the best to kind of do it as much as you can. And I have a difficult time doing tricks for friends. That's a tough thing for me. I just, uh, I'm, I'm rambling and this makes no sense and I've answered the question already, so goodbye. All righty, Jim Bowman, C. Do you have an extra copy of Totally Out of Control? And then actually I am curious how you made it so far along in magic without falling into the many pitfalls and slumps that seem to plague many magicians today. Um, you must have had a few great influences in your time that shaped you into the person that you are today. Um, the answer to Totally Out of Control, actually there's a funny story about that. Um, totally Out of Control just got reprinted about a year ago. But before that, I did not have a copy of it. 
I had given all my copies away. So um, I, they were going for like 100 bucks, 150 bucks on eBay. So I bought one on eBay. And the guy that I bought it from did not believe that it was me. So he was like, I, I had two or three emails back with him, didn't believe it was me. Finally, he realized it was me, and then he said he didn't want to sell me the book. He would rather send it to me, have me autograph it, and then send it back to him. So uh, long story short, he ended up giving me the book. It was kind of a funny situation. I gave him something else. Um, but um, to answer the thing about pitfalls, and, and I, I've just been really lucky. I work hard. Um, I work hard at uh, trying to be different and trying to be original. Um, and I think if you just keep pushing forward, you just have to keep trying to be yourself. Keep trying to be yourself. It's great to read books. It's great to know what everybody's doing. It's great to uh, have the background of every single move in the world. But at some point, you need to be yourself. So that's, to me, I think the biggest key for me is I've always stayed true to myself, from my personality to my tricks to uh, anything else that I try to do. Don't be one of those guys that you'll see. A lot of times you'll see some of these guys. I hate to say they're old timers, but you'll see these old timers that will they did this, they're telling the same jokes, doing the same act that they did in 1950. And they still think it's funny. And it's kind of sad, but those guys, you know, nowadays things are different with MTV, with every, everything that's so fast paced. You're competing with so much other stuff. You've, you've got to kind of, you know, move forward, move forward, move forward. So that's my, my uh, advice on that. So there you go. Let's go to another question here. Okay, we've got one last question here. Um, Anthony Bass, can you give five tips to amateur magicians looking to go pro? I gave my own tips on another site, and I'm looking for a, another perspective on the idea. Um, well, I'm probably gonna, not going to answer this the way you would think, because uh, I'm probably i more or less going to answer it with sort of questions. Uh, that's, what, is, what do you mean by going pro? What does pro mean? Does pro mean that you're doing cruise ships? Does pro mean that you're... Uh, stand-up comedian? Does pro mean that you're selling magic tricks on a magic site? Does pro mean that you're... Uh, an example would be, would you compare a professional, say, Chris Angel with uh, Danny Garcia? What would your comparison... I mean, those are two different kinds of guys that both make a living off magic. One has a lot of talent and is pretty creative, and the other is Chris Angel. Um, you know, Danny makes a lot of money selling tricks creating tricks, working on tricks, performs some, but not as much. Probably makes more money selling tricks than he does performing tricks. Chris Angel obviously doesn't create any tricks. and doesn't really sell any tricks. He sells, you know, like baby clothes with his name on it on his website. But, um, you know, he, he just is a performer on television. Um, a lot of guys, like a guy that does cruise ships versus, say, Danny Garcia. You know, it's, it's, hard, it's, a, it's an interesting question is what does pro mean? To be really professional, I mean, you just got to know who you are and know what you're trying to be. Are you ex really accept what you are? And, and, and that's what you are. Let's say that you're a professional magician who is doing standard magic tricks, not trying to be super creative, just selling themselves. You're a good, good business person and you want to do magic tricks in your community, in your town. If that's what you are and that you at least admit that and realize that, you know, your goal, I, it's, it's, that's a different answer to the question of if you're a guy like, want to be like Danny Garcia or if you want to be like Chris Angel or if you want to be the cruise ship magician. So the answer to that question is, is that's really got to be defined as to what exactly do you want to do. And if you can't really say you want to do them all because it's not a lot of people can do it all. Not a lot of people can perform, can create, and can, you know, sell to magicians. So uh, that would be my answer to that, just kind of, you really have to know what you really want. And then from there, it's another set of questions. So uh, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this a little uh, thing, and we're going to do it again probably with uh, most of the artists. I'll probably definitely do it again. We'll try to get Wayne to do it. We'll get Danny's or see it. That'd be fun. He could do it in Spanish or something. I think it's going to see it like my beads. <laughs> Danny, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I love you, man. You're the best. You're not even know. A theory of an artist, but in our hearts you are. Danny Garcia. Rest in peace. He's dead now? I don't know. He's dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> peace. West Side. He's dead to me.